In today's episode. Typical jerk neighbors complain about the truck in my yard so I replace it. You can't cash that check without an account. Shorts? On a 38C slash 80%? No. So let's get started. Typical jerk neighbors complain about the truck in my yard so I replace it. I live in a mostly quiet neighborhood with lots of snowbirds and weekenders because of the proximity to a lake. The year-rounders are mostly retired and people generally get along fine. A couple years ago, neighbors on one side built a new garage and driveway moving their cars much closer to my existing Forsythia hedge. I love the Forsythia in the spring and basically let it grow however it likes so I can have the bright yellow flowers. Almost immediately they started complaining that the hedge blocked their view as they backed out of their driveway. In my state, neighbors have no right to a view extending over someone else's property, and our Supreme Court has repeatedly ruled that as long as trees and bushes do not actually impinge onto the roadway, property owners have no obligation to trim for visibility. I keep a five-foot strip mode between my hedge and the road perfectly reasonable to my way of thinking. Since they have no recourse re hedges, they instead complain to county code enforcement about anything else they can think of. My brother parked his licensed and insured project truck on my property a while back because he was in the process of moving and needed a spot for it while he was figuring things out. In the meantime, he was in a bad accident in another vehicle and the truck has been sitting for over a year now. The license plate recently expired and I got a letter from the county with threats of fines if it wasn't removed. Cue the malicious compliance, my brother decided to sell the truck for scrap and had it towed away this morning. This gave my neighbors their temporary victory as they observed from their deck and nearly six inches of improved view from their driveway. At least until I moved my second vehicle a 1960 Lincoln which is about two feet longer than the truck with current plates and insurance, into that place this afternoon. As a single person with more than one vehicle, I may get around to driving that old car at least once more before winter. You can't cash that check without an account. Not necessarily malicious, but I definitely complied. We had an hailstorm in my area and my car was pummeled with the hail. Not a huge deal as most dentless hail repairs will do it for way cheaper than your insurance pays. Call my insurance and they scheduled me for three days later on a Sunday of all things. Lady shows up and takes photos and prints me off a settlement check on the spot. With a slight problem being the check is written out to me and the national financing company I bought my car from years ago. Somehow when I paid off my car they never released my title and I never noticed. I now cannot deposit my check without NFC releasing their claim on my car which has been paid off for at least 10 years by this point. After some calling around and jumping through hoops, I am told if I go to National Bank that issued my insurance check, with some paperwork from NFC releasing all claims on my car I could cash my insurance check. Fine but stupid NB isn't in my town, and it is a 45-minute drive to said NB. I verified everything by speaking with a manager at the nearest NB and verified all I needed was the letters, my ID and the check, and he would cash my check. I show up and head to a teller like the local manager told me to do and presented all the required documentation. The teller asked me what my account number was. I told her I didn't have one. She informed me that checks over XYZ amount could not be cashed if a person did not have an account with them. I informed her the LM told me that I could cash this check if I showed the required documentation. She informed me he didn't know what he was talking about and called him over. They had a nice private conversation and collectively informed me that the teller was correct and I had to have an account. Funny enough as I walked up to the bank, a sign was informing people that if new users signed up for an account and deposited an amount smaller than my insurance check, you would get a $250 sign up bonus. I asked what was required to set up an account and lo and behold it took a whole 10 minutes to set up my new account and about a week for the check to clear and get my $250 bonus. Transferred everything but the required amount to keep the account open because you had to close out in person, I think it was $10 or under. Shorts? On a 38C slash 80%? No. 
So a bit ago, I used to work at an automotive joint that was fairly small, could fit maybe six cars out front. This store also had no storeroom, the stock was stacked, very dangerously to the roof next to the entrance behind a crappy metal wall, and its loading dock was literally a hole that opened up towards a fenced bin area towards the sun, this is an important detail. No this was as title says, not a particularly nice day to be at work, despite the heat, it wasn't technically summer yet, I think it was three or so days till it was officially summer. Now this company allowed us to wear shorts during the summer as part of our uniform as long as they were black knee-length shorts. So here I am already waking up in a sweat and getting ready for work, I checked the forecast, 38, yeah f asterisk ck that noise. And we're getting stock today? Yes shorts it is. Got to work with stock just being dropped off, cool what 6 pallets, whilst still on the excessive size all good, was about to put my bike in the office, literally lived around the corner, and manager walks out. Now, he was a younger guy and openly stated he didn't care about this job, and only transferred to go to a mine site job. He looks at me and asks why I'm wearing shorts, gee I wonder. I told him it's policy that we can do so when it's summer and gets hot and since we're screwing around outside with stock, remember no storeroom, I'm not wearing long black pants, he looks at me and asks who told me this to which again told him, literally company policy. So being the dick that he was he decides to throw a hissy fit and go on a pointless rant about how he's manager and we should listen to him first and foremost blah 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 whatever. Speech ends and he just asks if I'm going to get changed, nope. Easy answer, cue the pissed off look and go home then. Cool, day off it is then. Time for aircon and video games. Get a call hours later asking me where I am as the read of the stock turned up. Wait rest of stock. Yeah the other six or so pallets worth of shit. So it was about 12 pallets of stock. On a hot ass day. With no store room. They're wrapped in black hot as hell heat shrink. My response was just, you told me to go home if I'm going to wear shorts. Come in the next work day, watch was a few days later, he's having a cry at me already going on abui how he just asked me to get changed and wanted me back there, and I should have known about the stock at sec. Two guys there and the only two guys doing this stock both said same thing, he more or less told me to f asterisk ck off. Best part about it, stock was everywhere in the store and pallets were shoved into the aisles to bring them in for the night and took nearly three days to do, and he had to help instead of sodding in the office the whole time. Guess the moral is, don't tell your workers to go home when you know you're about to have 12 pallets of shit rock up and already no staff as is. Thanks for watching.